Okay, let's take a look at how to use uh, a t-test inside uh, R. And for that, we need to look at some uh, data. And I found a, a data set named uh, sleep. I think works fine for, for this. The data in this uh, data set consists of uh, 20 observations of uh, 10 different uh, patients. Each pa patient have been treated with two different kinds of um, uh, drugs. In this case, uh, group one has been treated with one drug and a different uh, type of medicine has been used for those in the group two. So it's the same patients they have just been given um, give different treatments and then they have been looking at uh, how much sleep they have gotten out of this. So as for all statistical analysis, if, if it's possible, I suggest to actually plot the data initially and then you can take a you can try to use some kind of statistical method to assess the difference afterwards. So uh, let's try to put this uh, into a TD plot and uh, then specify that what we want on, on the x-axis. I think that should be the amount of extra sleep. And on the y-axis, I'll put the, the group. And when we can say, just use a geom point uh, initially. And, oh, I need to specify it should be on the y-axis here. Okay, um, so far so good. So now we have the amount of extra sleep down here and uh, the group on the y-axis. And we can see that the amount of ex additional sleep uh, is much higher in the second group than in the first group. It has been shifted upwards by maybe one, 1 1.5 hour. So there's, to me it seems there is a difference. But there is also quite light, large variation within each of the, the data sets here. So let's take a look at um, if that's actually a, a significant difference or not. For that we can, uh, we can initially we need to assume that these are normal distributed uh, values. In most cases they are, but that's not uh, given. And then we should uh, try to put uh, data into a t-test function and try to explain the amount of additional sleep and how that depends on, on the group a variable here. And we can see what uh, comes out here. Um, I assume you are familiar with uh, the t-test uh, initially. And what can be seen here is some summary statistics from that. We have computed a, a t value, a degree of freedom from our setup here. And um, we also have a, a p value, which is close to 0 0.05, but it's not below. So usually you will not interpret this as a significant difference, but it seems there is a difference between these two. Um, but it also requires additional data to actually figure out is there a difference or not. Um, we also get some information about the, the means in the two groups and a 75% confidence interval of the uh, mean difference between the two groups. And as this confidence interval uh, contains uh, zero, uh, again, it's an indication that it's not a significant difference we have found. Okay, I would like to look a bit more on this uh, data uh, because there might be uh, other relation we uh, need to, to look into uh, here. And what I'm considering is that, is there a, a systematic relation between these points or is it uh, just randomly connected? That is, are there any, um, are there independent, ten independent samples or are they 10 samples that uh, we know more of than what was assumed using the unpaired test uh, before? So I'll try to use this geom line and see if I can plot something here. Doesn't really work out well. Um, and that was the. Uh... Okay. So 
what I was able to do here is uh, still to plot the uh, that amount of digital sleep on the x-axis and the group on the y-axis. And then I have connected my observations um, that are within the same group. And what is the result is seen here. And we can see that uh, one of the, the person that had uh, um, that actually slept less in uh, group uh, one gave, got back to normal in group two. And we can see that the difference between these two are in, in the same direction, if, if you want to say so. It's not uh, randomly connected, but there's a generic uh, trend from one to the second group. And that means that uh, that because we actually have a, a paired data set, we should uh, employ this and uh, that will usually, if we see something like this, it will um, get a, a much uh, stronger, uh, more significant uh, result. But it's only fair to use this if the, the data actually is uh, paired. So again, we want to explain extra in terms of the, the group and the data should be the sleep and I want to figure out how to tell it, it should be a paired t-test. Uh, it's just to say paired and then set that to true. So now we get the results of a pair TT test and um, we get a T value of uh, more than four with uh, nine degrees of freedom and a P value which is much less than 0 0.05 which is usually used as a significant threshold. So given this uh, amount of detail in, in the data or these observations we can now conclude that the, the drug actually uh, the, the second drug or the drug administered in the second group actually increases the amount of sleep that the, the patients are getting compared to the first group. And we also get some details about the, the mean of the differences between these observations. So these were some of the things you are able to do using the, the t-test. And I really think it's important to try to visualize your data initially to get a sense of what is possible to uh, to read out uh, from the data. Um, yes, good. I hope this gives you a, a bit of overview of what is possible to do of uh, t-tests inside R. And in general, all the statistical tests I know of are implemented in R and are available. So it's just to go around and, and search for whatever you are in, in need of and then use it from, from in here.